Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. Trigonometric expressions are fun. We use identities to simplify them, to write them in the simplest form. And sometimes you never know what you're going to get, so there's an element of surprise. Unless it's a problem that asks you to verify an identity, in which case you know the answer, but it's still fun. Anyways, we have this expression cosine x divided by 1 plus sine x, and the reciprocal of that expression, they're added together, and what is going to come out of this? Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, I think I can think of two methods for this. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But one of the things I can think of is I could probably multiply the first one by the conjugates. By conjugate, I mean if you have an expression like 1 plus sine x, multiplying it by 1 minus sine x. And the reason behind it is from the Pythagorean theorem, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 for trigonometry, I can basically express 1 minus sine squared as cosine squared or 1 minus cosine squared as sine squared. Make sense? So let's go ahead and multiply this by 1 minus sine x and 1 minus sine x. Let this be our first method. And if you do that, you're going to get the following. Cosine x is going to be multiplied by 1 minus sine x. And then at the bottom, we're going to get 1 minus sine squared x. Let's go ahead and take care of this first. And once that's simple enough, we're going to add the second piece. Now, 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared x. That's going to cancel out one of them at least. We're going to end up with cosine x at the bottom. And guess what this gives you? 1 minus sine x divided by cosine x, which is interesting, right? So those two expressions, in other words, are equivalent. So now we can add the second part, which is 1 plus sine x divided by cosine x. And then since I have a common denominator, I can go ahead and add the numerators. And if I do, I get 1 minus sine x plus 1 plus sine x all over cosine x is going to be the common denominator. And notice that sine x and negative sine x are opposites and they cancel out. So I can go ahead and cancel them out and I end up with 2 over cosine of x. Now is this in the simplest form? Pretty much. Sometimes they're going to ask you to write it in a simpler form. I'm not sure if that is the simplest form, but you can use reciprocal functions. So what's the reciprocal of cosine? If you said secant, you're right about that. And so you can also write this as 2 times secant x. But a lot of times leaving everything in terms of sine and cosine and simplify everything would be good enough in my opinion. Okay, but always check with your teacher or professor. All right, so that's what we got by using the first method by the method of conjugate. So anytime I see 1 plus sine x, 1 minus sine x, 1 plus cosine x or 1 minus cosine x in the denominator, I can use this method. Can I use it with 1 plus tangent x? Probably not, because when you multiply 1 plus tangent x with its conjugate, you're going to get 1 minus tangent squared, which is not super duper helpful. But if you can get 1 with secant squared or 1 plus tangent squared, that's a different story. Because hopefully you do know this identity, 1 plus tangent squared is the same as secant squared. Make sense? And you can prove it by just replacing tangent with sine over cosine or going backwards, however you like. Okay, so we got this with the conjugates method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach. So for, the sec for my second approach, what is the original problem? Cosine x over 1 plus sine x plus its reciprocal, right? Plus 1 plus sine x over cosine x. And I don't know if there's a third way to do it, probably. The second method is going to be doing something, I don't know, maybe obvious or brute forcey. We're going to just make a common denominator. What else could be more straightforward, right? Make a com If you can't do anything with a sum or difference, just make a common denominator and simplify as much as possible. Of course, you have to know your identities, such as sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, you know, secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared, tangent is sine over cosine, and then double angles, and so on and so forth. There's tons of formulas. There aren't that many. There are finitely many formulas that you have to memorize. Good news. 
Okay, let's make a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by cosine x. I'm going to put that in parentheses, top and bottom. And I'm going to multiply this by 1 plus sine x. And that's going to produce squares because cosine multiplied by cosine is cosine squared. And I can add them now because we have a common denominator. 1 plus sine x will be squared. Let's go ahead and write it as 1 plus sine x squared. Divide it by a product. Don't distribute this yet because it might just cancel out. I mean, if you distribute, you can factor it again. I mean, no big deal, but it's totally up to you. I mean, if you want to do it, that's fine. It's just extra work. So let's go ahead and expand the numerator because that is needed. And now if you expand 1 plus sine x squared, you get 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared x. And that is divided by this product. Again, I'm not distributing. I'm going to resist the temptation. And now what you should do is look for identities. Try to simplify this as much as possible. Does 1 plus 2 sine x have a meaning? Does 1 plus sine squared? No. But cosine squared plus sine squared have, has a meaning. It has a huge meaning, actually. That's one of the most important formulas. It's one from Pythagorean identity, right? Or Pythagorean, what's it called? Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so it's one. Another one plus 2 sine x divided by cosine x multiplied by 1 plus sine x. Okay, great. So I think I'm going to show you a graph at the end that will explain what we're doing. Okay, hopefully that will help you a little bit more. Now, what can I do? Look at the numerator. You can add 1 plus 1. It's as easy as 1 plus 1. That was straightforward, right? And then, not only that, but you can also, since we didn't distribute, we should be looking for common factors, right? Is there any common factors? Well, 2 is a common factor, yes, so we can do it. Take out 2, and guess what? Miracles, right? Mathemagic happens. And we can cancel out 1 plus sine x, and we end up with 2 over cosine x, which is the same thing as 2 times secant x. Whichever one you like. Doesn't matter. No big deal. They're both good. But that's the answer. All right? So basically, by making a common denominator, we're able to solve this problem. Well, sometimes they can get very complicated, so you may want to look for other solutions. But always, like, maybe a plan B if you can't do anything else. Okay? As a last resort, maybe. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this. So what I did was to graph two functions for you. And of course, those two functions are right here. And guess what? They overlap. To show the overlap, I, may, I, I had to make one of them dotted. The orange one, I think that's orange, right? Okay, I'm not color, color blind. So the other one is kind of bluish. And you can see they completely overlap because they are identical. Of course, cosine x should not be 0. 1 plus sine x should not be 0. But Desmos doesn't care about those, like, no open dots on Desmos. Too bad. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video and possibly some other videos. Until next time, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.